said I would go. I said I would, you know, go down to the house and keep it in the back of my mind that maybe it would work, maybe it would help. Four months after the death of John Yelenik, the Vincent sisters meet the Blairsville police at the murdered dentist's home. They gave me information about a reddish colored SUV. I was taken back. Kevin Pulley drives a maroon colored SUV type vehicle. As we were walking through the kitchen, uh, John's spirit yelled out and said, pay close attention to the footprints. It appeared to me that it was an expensive running shoe. And also, I could tell the size. It was like a, maybe a size 10. There's no way they could have known that. There's no, I mean, even if they got a tape measure, there's no way they could have known it because it was faded by then. The psychics offer a prediction. The killer did leave evidence at the crime scene. Evidence they believe will be his downfall. John Yelnick has DNA of the killer underneath his fingernails. And we told the police, you need to pursue this. Would the long-awaited DNA results be the key to the case? Then, a final perplexing revelation. Over the footprint, I had a flash of dog tags. Whoever had these dog tags helped kill John Yelnick. This person has a military background. The psychics have given the police more to look into. But will their clues lead the police to the evidence they need to arrest one of their own? Four months have passed since the murder of dentist John Yelenik. The police suspect a state trooper is the killer. Their suspicions are confirmed by two psychic sisters who offer more clues. And the psychics actually gave us things to work on, you know, the dog tags, the military, uh, the SUV, and the footprints. The psychics say their vision of dog tags means the killer has a connection to the military. I was sort of skeptical about that, thinking that, yeah, they got the car right, they got the possible trooper right, but he wasn't in the military. He didn't have dog tags. We looked into it further, and indeed, he did have a military background. The police ramp up their investigation into the state trooper and make a damning discovery. We found video evidence from local gas stations that Kevin Foley was driving through town. He didn't have to travel through Blairsville to get back home, and yet he did. Kevin Foley had means. He had motive. And now it's clear he had opportunity. But police still don't have enough hard evidence to make an arrest. And Foley's not talking. He's hired a lawyer. We were unable to get to Trooper Kevin Foley. He was not cooperating with us. A local police department, like the Blairsville Police Department, does not have the resources or the manpower to investigate a murder for months or years on end. So it became quite apparent that they were going to need help. The concern was, should they call in the state police to investigate this, considering one of their prime suspects was a state police trooper? An independent agency needed to be brought in to investigate this, hence the attorney general. This is a very circumstantial case. Uh, this wasn't a case with a confession uh, or with an eyewitness. So it had to be built piece by piece. Deputy Attorney General Anthony Krasdick brings some much-needed muscle to the case. One of the key pieces of evidence in this case certainly were the bloody shoe prints. This was a shoe print made from a A6 Gel Creed or Gel Creed Plus between a size 10 and a 12 and a half. Only 25,000 pairs were ever sold in America. Krasdick learns that Kevin Foley owns a pair. There's still nothing to place him directly at the crime, at the crime scene. And then... The DNA results came back and showed that there was a match to Kevin Foley. Kevin Foley's DNA had been trapped underneath his victim's fingernails. Just as the psychics predicted. 
17 months after the murder of the Blairsville dentist, the police finally arrest trooper Kevin Foley. All charges. Foley never stopped believing John was a monster. Kevin Foley made no secret of his ill will towards John Yelnick. He just would tell anybody that John Yelnick um, was, a, was, was evil, should be killed, even asked one trooper to help him kill him. The prosecution paints the jury a vivid picture of the events of April 13th. At around 1 a.m., Foley arrived at Yelnick's house and entered through the back door. Foley attacked Yelenik, slashing him in the face and chest. He pushed Yelnik's head through the front door window, nearly decapitating him in the process. The pathologist testifies it took up to nine minutes for John Yelenik to bleed to death. Throughout the eight-day trial, Foley maintains his innocence. But on March 18, 2009, he's convicted of first-degree murder in the death of John Yelenik. He's sentenced to life in prison with no chance for parole. He is appealing the verdict. He was the most wonderful person in the world. He died the most horrible death. And tonight, this is his night. We love you, John, and we miss you. We're never forgetting. For John's friend and neighbor, Foley's conviction means an end to a nightmare. And she credits the Vincent sisters for their part in solving the case. I believe that the psychics were helpful in this case. I felt like it was just incredible, the information that they knew. What we wanted to do from the very beginning was to make sure that we found out who did this to our friend, this to our friend.